Hi, and welcome to the Sabbath Christian Church's online sermon. We have been dealing with the aspects of the relationship of God with the Son of Man. One of the relationships is that the Son of Man receives suffering. Seems like an interesting thing, the Son of Man to receive. And you, Son of Man, neither fear them or their words, neither will be dismayed at their presence, for they are a rebellious house. He started something there with Ezekiel. He said, because he told them that they are a rebellious house. And what comes next after that? And then he says in Isaiah, He was despised and forsaken of men, a man of sorrows, acquainted with grief. He was despised, and we did not esteem him. Surely our griefs himself bore and our sorrows he carried. The Son of Man was despised by these people because he brought God's word to them and told them of the evils that they were doing. He suffered. He says, smitten of God and afflicted. He was pierced for the aggressions. He was crushed for the iniquities. He was chastened for the well-being. By his scourging we are healed. So God offers the suffering to the Son of Man to bring the evil away, to heal them from their evil, and to heal them from disease, chastening for our well-being. By a scourging, we are healed. He was oppressed and he was afflicted and he didn't open his mouth like a lamb led to be the slaughter. He didn't say anything more. He had done enough and they were after him and they were going to get him. He didn't open his mouth. The Lord was pleased to crush him putting him to grief. He would render him as a guilt offering. See? So the Son of Man was esteemed to the point where he could be a guilt offering and take all the suffering in. And the good pleasure of the Lord will uh, prosper him in his hand. As a result of the anguish of his soul, he will see and be satisfied by his knowledge of the righteous one. My servant, he says, will justify the many. This kind of suffering is not something we particularly think of as an aspect of the Son of Man with all the blessings. Here is a greater blessing, an expensive one. He will bear their iniquities. Ah! Uh, He's not getting away with their iniquities. We expect the Son of Man to do righteous and be blessed. And he is blessing. But he's blessing the others. I will allot him a portion with the great. He will divide the booty with the strong. He will pour it out himself to death. He was numbered with the transgressors. He had never he's righteous. The Son of Man, he himself bore the sins of many and interceded for the transgressors. What an awesome position to be put in. Something that a person really would not like to think of happening to them. But he accepted that. And they said, let us devise plans against uh, 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 Jeremiah. For we're, we're going to take care of him. Uh, the law is going to disappear. It's going to be lost to the priest. 
and the divine word will be gone to the prophets. He says, come on, let us strike at him with our tongues and give no heed to any of his words. They got at him and they got at him very strongly. And he says in Matthew, Elijah does first come and restore things, and yet it is written how the son of, that the Son of Man, that he will suffer many things and be treated with contempt. It's like Elijah, just like the prophets we were talking about, the Son of Man of the past. But I say to you, Elijah has indeed come, did whatever they wished, just as is written of him, killed him. Son of Man gets killed for their evil. As a uh, death penalty for their evil, he takes it on. And in uh, Matthew it says here, But I say to you that Elijah already came and did not recognize him, but so to him whatever they did, so did to him whatever they wished. So the Son of Man, it's the New Testament, this is the Son of Man, 83 times, is going to suffer at their hands. This is the penultimate Son of Man. He warned them, instructed them, do not tell this to anyone, saying, The Son of Man must suffer many things and be rejected by the elders and chief priests and be killed and raised up on the third day. They killed him. They delivered him over. It was a predetermined plan that he nailed him to the cross by godless men and put him to death, the Son of Man, who was there to help and to save. And this is something that the Son of Man said on the cross. Why have you forsaken me? He went and did it alone. But you disowned the Holy and Righteous One and asked a murderer to be granted you and put to death so that we might die and live to righteousness by what the Son of Man and the New Testament did. For by your wounds he was healed. Didn't we just say that further? For Christ died for sins once and for all because he never sinned. He never did anything wrong and he suffered a death he didn't have to. Why have you forsaken me? The just for the unjust that he might bring us to God. Amen. And thank you for watching and listening.